I'm curious, Mr. Donovan. How exactly did you amass such a detailed knowledge of New Bordeaux? Like I tell any of you assholes. Mr. Donovan! Look, New Bordeaux's more than an outline on a map. It's a collection of districts, cultures, people. My job was to listen and observe. Identify the relevant target. Provide Lincoln with a blueprint. He did the rest. Could you give this committee an example of what you mean? Yeah, all right. Take Delray Hollow, where Lincoln grew up. The hollow's filled with pride, hope. But beneath that is a layer of fear, of anger, for the sense you gotta scratch and claw for everything. The fuck are you? Frisco Fields. Manicured lawns, perfect <laughs> smiles, southern charm. <laughs> Thing is, it's all a show, a facade. Just because the knife comes out of a monogram sleeve doesn't mean it won't cut your throat. Hmm, the French War. Home to every fantasy and perversion you can imagine. But if you're not careful, those appetites will come back around on you. Be the very thing that kills you. Bayou Phantom. It's beautiful down there. Serene even. But it's also vicious, wild, unpredictable. Ah, yes. Pint for done. A proud people, the Irish. <laughs> the entire district runs on whiskey and rage. People up there never back down. Never. On the surface, South Downs looks like a nice blue collar neighborhood. Safe. Friendly, even. It's all a cover, though. Cover for violence and lawlessness. You could almost mistake Barclay Mills and Tikva Harbor for normal American industrial zones. But in order to do that, you'd have to ignore all the brutality and workplace accidents. Downtown, the prosperous heart of the city. Concrete, steel, the wheels of government, and greasing the whole thing is an endless stream of graft and corruption. Then there's River Row. <laughs> whole damn district's just one never-ending knife fight. This is all very poetic, Mr. Donovan. But it doesn't explain... How Lincoln Clay took down the entire city in the summer of 68? He did it by mastering the one thing everyone in New Bordeaux understands. Power. I understand that Lincoln Clay's action were the result of a vendetta against Sal Marcano. But why did the pursuit of that vengeance lead Mr. Clay to unleash violence and destruction throughout the entire city? But Senator, that's the beautiful part. Sal owned New Bordeaux, so Lincoln could treat the whole city as one giant target. Men with power like Sal Marcano, they think they're untouchable. I don't have it in me to feel shame for the things I've done. Never have. What they don't want is for you to start picking at the loose threads at the edge of their empire. Disrupting the drug market from the street up. Robbing back alley heroin dealers in the hollow. Or shooting up the PCP labs tucked among the high society in Frisco Fields. They damn sure don't want you infiltrating their safe houses and extracting valuable information from their low-life lieutenants. Hey, you want a doctor? Then you better tell me something worth hearing. They tend to get annoyed when you start hunting two-bit pimps through the French ward one by one. Terrorizing old Uncle Lou Marcano's well-paying Johns and grinding the flesh trade in the city's bordellos to a crawl. Came in and killed everybody. They definitely don't want you to keep pulling the thread till you're shooting up the casino boat that chugs through that muddy bayou. I want you to send a message to your brother. Pull enough thread and the whole operation starts to fall apart. Should have saved a bullet or two. You muscle in on Enzo Conti, interdict all that lost cargo that fell off the car in a train yard somewhere in Barclay Mills. The guns, the cars, the human beings. You choke off every single black market pipeline that keeps the Marcano Empire afloat. Lincoln Clay! Lincoln Clay! 
Every lowlife ball of piss in this city smells blood in the water. My blood! Then, and this is the absolute last thing they want, is for you to start building your own thing on the same spot where you tore theirs down. Once it's in our hands, I'll decide who gets to run the day to day. Men with power like Sal Marcano never understand how quickly they can lose it. But once you've unraveled enough thread, you take all that thread you got and string them up with it. And the weapons, the tools Mr. Clay used to terrorize the citizens of New Bordeaux, I suppose you furnished him with those as well. Actually, no. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Senator. I would have given him any gun, knife, or bomb he asked for. What can I do for you, Lincoln Clay? But like I've said, Lincoln never had trouble finding a weapon. And just how does he accomplish that? Help me kill Sal Marcano. For most of that summer, one of his underbosses, Cassandra, she ran the Haitian gang, looped him into a sweet little arm smuggling ring she had going. That kept him squared away. There are stashes of guns hidden in this city. Full service operation. They aim to please. Pistols, rifles, shotguns, ammo, you name it. It was all black market gear, of course. I mean, this was a real arsenal. If the VC had been this well provisioned at the drain, the whole damn war might have turned out different. Extended clips, perfectly tuned sight, hollow points, silencers. By the time Lincoln finished tinkering with a firearm, it was a precision instrument of death. Nothing like this had ever happened before. Lincoln wanted to terrify the mob. He wanted them to know he was going to kill every last one of them. Then, <laughs> Jesus, then when Burke came on board, things really kicked up another level. Explosives. Everything from Molotov cocktails to C4. You know, the stuff they use for controlled demolition. Except in our case, not, uh, not always so controlled. There was a loud crash, like a bomb going off. War on the streets as a gunman stormed the Royal Hotel, killing an untold number of men. You know what the funny part is? The funny part is, Lincoln didn't really need half the shit to take down Marcano. And the uh, systematic killing of Marcano's capos and lieutenants? Well, we weren't playing fucking patty cake. Christ. Fighting to him was like breathing. I've seen him bring a whole VC unit to its knees using nothing but his knife. I've seen him take apart an armored encampment from the canopy with a single scoped combat rifle. Put a rocket launcher in the hands of a man like that, and those poor bastards never stood a chance. Even back in Laos when we were running guns. Hell, almost from the moment he stepped off the chopper, I remember thinking to myself, this man has a talent for violence. There are some reports during this period, however, of mob safe houses being attacked by entire hit squads. Other reports have certain individuals, sometimes even entire operations, simply vanishing as if they were never there. Now, one soldier, no matter how skilled, simply is not capable. Enough, Senator. It's like you people haven't heard a word I've said. Lincoln played it smart, always. I need to look at our options, come up with a plan. If the best play was to silently neutralize all the muscle in a joint, well, he was more than proficient in the art of the covert takedown. Hell, uh, sometimes he even left a few breathing to have a chat with them later. I don't know anything. Let me tell you, Senator, the biggest weapon isn't worth a damn if the other guy can take it away from you before you even know he's there. If the smart move was to trade blows, make examples out of a few guys, and no one did public and brutal like Lincoln Clay. The last place in the world you'd want to be is in a fist fight with that man. It didn't matter how hard you hit him. He never, ever stopped moving forward. Muscle alone doesn't make you ruthless. You have to be willing to bite and claw and scrape and do what no one else will do to stay alive. Imagine being trapped in a dark room, and there's no way out. And every fear, every nightmare you ever had is in that room with you. And there's no escape from any of it. If you were vulnerable to being surgically picked apart from a distance, then no amount of guards would keep Lincoln from staying low, probing for weakness, and finding the perfect sight line. If the situation was less subtle, then he could go in guns blazing. You've never seen shock and awe like that, gentlemen. And all is green angel of death. 
The truth is, to his enemies, Lincoln Clay was a walking nightmare. He could hurt Sal Marcano and his crew in a hundred different ways. One thing we do agree on, Senator, no matter how it happens, all that really matters about any fight is how it ends. And who's left standing when it's over? By the time Lincoln finally faced off with Sal Marcano, he had effectively undermined Sal's whole network. New Bordeaux belonged to Lincoln. As soon as he broke Marcano's hold on a district, he transferred power to one of his underbosses. I'll decide who gets to run the day-to-day. -day. Like I said, Cassandra ran guns. She was Lincoln's main arms dealer. She could also lean on a few operators at the telephone exchange. Cassandra told me to reach out. I certainly appreciate some help with the phones. Whatever you need, consider it done. One call from Lincoln would cut communications for a whole neighborhood. Forget about calling in reinforcements or reporting on his movements. Once he got organized, he had Thomas Burke set up a service that delivered him a vehicle from his private fleet whenever he needed them. Anywhere in the city, day or night, it was like an armada. A couple of my guys have been keeping tabs on him. You should talk to them. Vito Scaletta was one of the most connected gangsters in the crew, so he became sort of a mob administrator. <laughs> Want me to keep going? You got nine more! When Lincoln needed backup muscle, one of Scaletta's hit squads was never far away. He also had connections to an underground doctor who gave Lincoln whatever he needed to patch himself up. The thing about Vito was he was old school mafia. Guys like that don't take orders from some punk who's not even in the family. We got rules. Not my fucking problem that you people don't understand. It's one of the great things about Lincoln Clay, though. He could line even the most unlikely of allies. God damn, don't you want a man like that on your side? It worked in Vietnam, and it definitely worked in New Bordeaux. If Mr. Clay had such grave misgivings about his associates, why enlist their help in the first place? You're still not getting it. It was never just about killing Marcano. It was about hurting him first. Lincoln wanted to take his legacy apart piece by piece, Tear down everything he'd ever worked for. He wanted him to understand that with all his money and all his muscle and his influence, there was nothing he could do to stop it. Lincoln had a significant impact. He did what the Bureau wouldn't or couldn't do. He finished them. Then somewhere along the line, Lincoln realized something you still can't seem to grasp. The best way to take down an empire, to make sure it stays down, is to build another empire right on top of it. New Bordeaux belongs to me. Ain't nobody left to stand in my way.